G'day guys, welcome to Rumble's Fish Room. So I've got some new fish, the title of it probably gave it away. I did show the members these fish on Monday, but um, it's time to show you guys. I was going to keep them kind of as a members exclusive for a couple of weeks, but things happened really fast and escalated really quickly. So there's a reason that I need to show them to the rest of you guys. All right guys, so evidence that I have been working in the fish room without the camera on. Um, but, we got some peacock bass. It's probably in the thumbnail, isn't it? Um, I'm gonna move my step about, back a bit. Um, they're being very aggressive to the point I was worried about this bloke actually going through the glass. That glass is only six millimeters. Um, but check it out. There's a huge batch of eggs right next to the plate. On the weekend, spent $22 on two plates and they obviously didn't mind me wasting my money on the plate. Um, I can't really remember. So I've bred peacock bass monos before. These are zingu, but I can't remember if I took them away from the eggs or not, but I'm gonna see what sort of parents these two are. Um, so, I don't know if I'm really going to explain how I got them or where they came from. I pretty much just keep that on the members video. But um, we got peacock bass. The girl has one eye blind and the boy has some damage on his dorsal fin. Um, doesn't really affect me trying to breed them. The only thing that I am worried about is that it's genetic. I think his fin is damaged by other, other fish, but her eye is obviously, I think, from birth, but we'll just see. I'm gonna have to be very vigilant of the fry to see what comes out. Obviously this pair is more than likely related and I'm guessing by how many of these Zingu would have come into the country originally that they're probably a couple of generations related. So we'll just see how the fry turn out. Um, yeah, I'm just going to be careful. Obviously, I've got the history of the flower horns. I know what to look out for, for genetic issues and that. Um, but fingers crossed they're fertile. Um, it's still way too early to tell. The eggs are only like 12 hours old. They, I, I kind of think I can see some white crowns on some of them, but not to it's too early to call them infertile. Um, we'll just have to wait and see. I, I kind of want to do a, raise these as a challenge to myself. Um, if you don't know, I used to have a pair of mono peacock bass. Um, to be honest, I think the mono personally are nicer than the zingu, but I got the zingu for something different. Um, but uh, I raised the fry to about four centimeters. I was pretty successful. Um, and then there was a bit of an Australian shortage on brine shrimp eggs. My current supplier, they weren't in business yet. They hadn't started their business. And um, I, I got hold of some eggs off a, I don't even know if it was a subscriber or whether it was, it was before YouTube. Somebody gave me some eggs and they were too old and they didn't hatch. And then I tried to put the fry straight to pellets from brine shrimp, where, but peacock bass, you need to wean them. And I actually lost them all just because I tried to do it so quick because I couldn't find any eggs. But this time um, I've actually got probably 30 grams of eggs in the freezer and I've got 500 grams of eggs on its way to me right this second. Um, I actually ordered the 500 grams for the flower horns, but coincidentally works well for these guys. Um, when I picked them up, they had crazy blue through the fins, but just the moving and the stress of breeding, that blue's not showing at the moment. And the other thing is they're in a blue tank, so I don't know how well that blue would show up on the camera, but I guess we'll find out in a couple of weeks. Um, in other news, five foot tank is filling up. Uh, I've just got it 
on the water I've, I've opened the water changes back up so it's only filling like three centimeters a day maybe um, I'll get let that go for a couple of days and then I'll fill it so somebody actually commented saying that the celly silicon isn't structural um, they, this glass this is a plywood tank with a glass set inside so the silicon is basically acting like a gasket there's actually no structural integrity there but on that note um, Franken tank is built with the cellies but that's no big feat um, this tank out here this tank is 8 by 2 by 3 foot tall out of 12 millimeter glass it's only filled up to the 800 millimeter mark probably 820 um, with the overflow and um, this tank's holding up this tank was always just a test for the sil for the silicon itself um, I've used like uh, three different acetic cure silicons and I honestly haven't noticed any difference um, and the Bostic acetic cure that I use is actually half the price of the Sellys but I don't know if you're just paying for the Sellys brand name um, but yeah so you can see in this tank here I really thumbed the silicon I didn't mess around there's like a 15 millimeter bead of silicon on the inside so I obviously was not 100% confident in the cellies but um, it's holding up the only thing I can pray for if it does go is that like one of the seams pops and not the whole tank blows out like if you remember a few weeks ago that the seven foot blew out and it only leaked it didn't actually explode which is quite handy because um, this tank here now that I actually think about it would be sad to lose the fish the only ones that I would be sad to lose is the garami and the stingray at this stage the garami is the second longest fish I've ever had I think I've got the catfish that live with the buccochromis so that's like my oldest fish longest having fish but yeah I think the garami is my longest fish now maybe I don't know I really want uh, I, uh, I, I also heaps of people ask me about the Texas cross flower horns um, I've still got three but they're all boys um, I wouldn't mind checking one out for fertility at some stage maybe we should pull one out now I've got I've got the um, that's actually a red Texas that hasn't faded I don't know if I'll ever breed it. I don't know what the parents were. Nothing like that. It, it's nothing. It's not really a fish that I desire to breed. Um, I could. I can't even breed the red Texas with the Texas cross flower horn because I don't have a female of either. All four are males. And then I've, I've got the Vija there, which I'm pretty sure is male as well. So. I honestly, if I could get my hands on a laying beaver, I don't even care what type. Um, it would be perfect to breed with one of those Texas cross flower horns. Um, to breed back to this pair up here, or this. So, obviously I've bred her, and then this is her babies. So, if this guy here is fertile it'd be really nice to have that broken viha texas flower horn male to breed with her breed with him because i really want to concentrate on trying to breed camphor so the plan is i don't know if i've said this on video just before we end the video it's a quick little thing my main goal right now is to try and breed camphor that's a classic camphor um, I'm still going to breed Super Red Dragon, but the Super Red Dragon is just going to be the funding to pay the power bills and then the camphor is going to be the long term goal. Um, the I can't afford to stop breeding Super Red Dragons and pay to run this fish room to just try and breed camphor and then not sell any of them for like four years, if that makes sense. So. 
yeah, the super dragon, super red dragons are my window to breed campfire, if that makes sense. Jeez, that was a bit of a rumbles ramble. We got um, completely sidetracked there. Um, let me know if you're excited about the peacock bass. Let me know your experiences with the Selly Silicon. Um, I do prefer using the boss stick. Like I wouldn't go out of my way to buy the set. Well, I, it's just me being lazy. That's why I buy the Sellys. Um, the reason I used it on that tank the other day is just the place that I buy the boss stick isn't open on the weekends. It's pretty much just business hours. And with me working 10 to 12 hour days, six days a week, it's really hard for me to even get to the shop to buy the Bostick Silicon. Um, but yeah, that's, I don't think I really need to explain why I use that Silicon. Um, I could probably order it for true work, but I hate the burden of giving money to my boss. Um, but anyway, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe for more, there's a little red button just down below there. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace out.